All right, well, we've touched on a number of serious topics tonight, so it's time to break it up with something a little lighter. Here to discuss abortion access in the United States. <laughs> it's the co-creator of The Daily Show, the very funny Liz Winstead. Hi, Liz. Hi. Um, from, from Gretchen Carlson to Liz Winstead. Do I go here? Yeah, right here. There's, was there weather? That's like um, when two, those are two different fronts meeting backstage. But also, we're both from Minnesota. Oh. And also, did Gretchen tell you that Michelle Bachman was her babysitter? That explains. <laughs> no, we didn't get that. Explains a lot. Yeah. Uh huh. <laughs> I just come out here with all the goods. What else? What else? Um, <laughs> what else do you want to tell us? I don't know. <laughs> Who else? <laughs> Who what? else babysat someone else? Um. Well, Amy Klobuchar babysat Jesse Ventura. That's not fucking. That's not right. No. I, I was like, I'm that not. doesn't work. That's like, that's like. Am that I is, too comfortable right no, now? No, no, you're, you're the right level. That's okay. like when Angelina, uh, Angelina I Jolie, my beer. Angelina, Angelina Jolie played Colin, Colin Farrell's mother. That's the like Amy Klobuchar being Jesse Ventura's babysitter. Yeah. That's like Hollywood age, you know. I know. Yeah. You know, what, Amy what, Klobuchar might have become president if she just wore shorts like Fetterman in the snow. I feel like no one talks about like what and no happened. One, what and no wrong. one talks about that. No Not one enough does. people are saying it. <laughs> no, I feel Klobuchar like I'm here to bring that because here's the deal. Remember the snowstorm? Of course you do. Sure. And everybody was like, isn't it amazing that she was in the snow? And I was like, no, she's fucking wearing ballet flats. She can't help pull anybody out of the car. Like it was a fucking rookie move to be in Minnesota wearing ballet flats in a snowstorm and then playing it over and over again like look at me I'm like I'm looking at you and I'm looking at your feet and if I'm stuck you're fucking useless <laughs> like I don't mean to just come out here hot but, no, look, and I've said thing. this to her and I'm glad you have it here's the thing okay, I think that a lot of here. I think that a lot of people were thinking tonight <laughs> What was up with Amy Klobuchar's shoes at her, at her announcement speech in 2020? <laughs> See, here's what's wrong. I just like to talk about what's wrong with the media. Talk, talk and, to me. And that's just And that's, what, like, that, that's your bread and butter. So let's, yeah, let's, let's just, hear it. I mean, that's what's wrong? Hey, hey, Liz, quick question. What's yeah. wrong with the media? You know what? So much. <laughs> what's wrong with the media at this moment is that I forgot my beer backstage. But that really hey, is the can media's we fly, fault. It's me. Hey, can we fly a beer for, for a Modelo, Liz Winstead? A Modelo, Yeah. Can somebody... I think you all are great. Thanks. Carol, Caroline, everybody. Not she, her job, everybody. I know. Look at me. <laughs> Actually, it's no one's job to bring a beer on stage for Liz, but it's happening. See? Did and you think happening. that? I know. Did you think I was going to be this person? Maybe um, not. I, I, I'm ex I didn't think you weren't. Okay. Like, I will say this. In fact, I'm unclear I'm this I, person. I'm just I, like ordering people around. Bring me both. It. You are so nice. Caroline Thank Dumpy. you. Thank I you. really appreciate it. Do you, um, have a, do you have a uterus on your shirt? Do you have a, oh, oh, it's a dog. <laughs> or it could be a uterus that's really Wow, honest. so you just, so you got, listen, that's a great segue because you've got one thing on the brain. Okay. Uh, that's a picture of a dog. Uh, but her hair was covering so, it was so like, bizarre. Is that one of those uteruses that barks? <laughs> kind of four legs, one of those uteruses? Um, I don't think you really understand when someone's uterus is barking that that is terminal and it shouldn't be joked about. And is this the kind of thing that you I'm say at the end of a long day? You. Is this what you say at the end of a long day? Boy, my uterus is barking. <laughs> oh, the uterus are barking. Hey, you know what's oh. great? You know what's great? My first this question you. was. No, what I say is my uterus are dusty. <laughs> I barely, like, I use it. I rent it out in New York for storage for people. I have to make the most of things. I'm not sure I needed another beer. <laughs> I'm sorry. Speaking of California, so you're. <laughs> Let's talk about abortion. <laughs> you're. Well, you know, it's my first question was how do you make abortion funny? We oh. did it. Uh, uh, so you're here for, for a fundraiser for your organization, yeah. Abortion Access Front. Yes. What should we uh, here in the blue states be doing? Well, I think it's twofold, right? So for folks who don't understand what's going on, it's bad. But uh, I think. <laughs> Real bad. Uh, Somebody gets up and walks out. <laughs> oh, yeah. So there's a couple of things. There is <sighs> Minnesota, California, New York, uh, Illinois are sort of the four sort of pillars of where 
not only is abortion access available, um, states are codifying, but there's just simply not enough providers trained. I think a lot of folks don't understand that a med student, when polled, 70% of med students say they did not get accurate gynecological care, and 90% of people going to med school just studying general medicine say they didn't get any. So we have a real shortage, um, and now that we have a shortage of, one of the things we should do is make sure that advanced practitioners, um, LPNs, physician's assistants can practice care in these states so we can have more people doing it. We really have to look at, I don't know if y'all are aware that um, any moment now, some rogue judge in Texas uh, is going to make a ruling where he thinks it's gonna stick, but it's really kind of bullshit. Um, trying to ban one of the medications in medication abortion, right? Um, it's something that shouldn't be taken lightly. And back to really your media point, which wasn't your question, but we don't talk about what's going on with abortion consistently enough to really educate folks on what they need to do. Uh, it's abortion funds need funds. The people who drive people need funds. Um, organizations like mine, like we travel around the country, do shows like this, comedy music shows in Birmingham, in Oklahoma City. And then we bring the providers and the activists on stage so the audience can hear what needs to be done and we hook them up so we're growing activist bases. Through that, and this is the part that was an unhappy accident, I guess, um, we stay for four or five days and we do this crazy clinics in these states can't get plumbers or people to fix their fences or their gardens. So we do all that shit at the clinic, like some Habitats for Humanity for abortion providers. You're not, but you personally are not doing the plumbing. Yes. You're plumbing? I, I don't do plumbing, but I do the gardening, <laughs> okay, the that, painting. Oh, oh, that's a, re yeah, that's a relief, just yeah. for their sake. No, I just great. have a, just the energy is not that one where I would trust you under a sink. <laughs> not in a bad way, I just don't think, I'm just saying. Did I mention I'm from Minnesota? We get shit done. Okay. Yeah. Um, Just saying, you came out and lay down on the couch and asked for a beer. <laughs> like a plumber. <laughs> no, no, like no, no. a fucking union not, plumber. Okay, all right. Hello? All right. All right. <laughs> you don't know any plumbers. But no, here's what's crazy. So, in getting to know all these folks that work at the clinics, the escorts, and the people who are doing the funding, they know these extremists by name. And so, after touring, and we've been to like 70 cities. We said, is anybody creating a database of all these people outside of your clinic? And they were like, no. So we started a database. We now have the largest anti-abortion extremist database in the nation. We busted 30 of them at the insurrection and turned their names over to the FBI. And if you've seen in the paper that about 20 of them over the course of the past three months have been brought up on federal charges, it's because of our videotaping and our evidence, so we're out there doing it. Not a, not a snitches get stitches crowd, but that's mm. okay. The, uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, so you mentioned, no, there, you mentioned the media and how difficult it is to get yep. them to co cover the substance of what's actually happening. And I, I, I struggle with this too. There is a, there's a way in which the, the current landscape it, it processes news very, very quickly. And so there is a ruling, there's Dobbs, or there's gonna be a ruling on Mifepristone, and the news covers it, they do. They focus on it, they, they'll talk to people about it, they'll have a debate about it. But then by the time you get to day two, day three, you're already on the conversation about the conversation. You're about the analysis. Uh, there's a debate right now, Mississippi, Tennessee, Kentucky, uh, states across the country have or are, are about to uh, 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 pass laws that are extremely draconian, whether it's about drag shows or trans kids or what can be taught in schools. And the debate that plays out uh, in major outlets is much more about the kind of meta context of what constitutes mm -hmm. bias, uh, what what is considered objective, what is accurate. How do we, how do, as someone who I think has been, like you, you, you are the co-creator of The Daily Show, you started Air America Radio, you've been at the forefront of trying to figure out how to yoke this conversation to the left. What have you learned about how to make the media the broader media, how to work the refs. Yeah, I think it's twofold, right? With, it, like you said, so much shit happening fast and furious. 
I think the expectation of the media to talk about it as much as that needs to be talked about is is pretty rough. But what happens is this this is not new, right? I started Abortion Access Front when I watched Wendy Davis. And when I realized that, remember how horrible we thought that Texas law was? What America didn't know is that 25 other states dropped that same law. It was a piece of model legislation. And so I drove around the country doing fundraisers before I started the org. And so for me, knowing that there's trend pieces to be told about what happens when um, language is muddy around rape and, and life of the mother exceptions, what does that look like? All of a sudden, people are being transported out of states and physicians aren't providing care because they're unclear if they're going to lose their licenses. Um, you know, we have, I have a podcast, a weekly podcast called Feminist Buzzkills, where we talk about this shit every week because somebody's got to talk about it every week. Because I think what happens, too, is the horse race gets talked about, the sort of, like you said, the meta. But sometimes I think people aren't talking to the right people. First of all, they're rarely talking to folks who've had abortions. They're rarely talking to the providers, and they're talking to either generalists or people who are running big national organizations who aren't on the ground and don't have the insight and can't really passionately. Storytelling when it comes to abortion, I think, is very profound. And so bringing facts and being able to say, I've been to 197 clinics. The people that work at those clinics can't drive home the same way in a single week. There's anti-abortion extremists who put up wanted posters in their neighborhoods with their addresses and say a baby murderer lives here, doxes them. These folks don't tell their own doctors what they do for a living because they fear they might get inferior, if not harmful, care. And so when you humanize folks, which you don't very much when talking about abortion, it becomes very larger and bigger And what does it mean. Um, people want to learn more. Because the truth be told, we also have just been as women. I had so many guys go, God, it's really hard what you're doing out there. It's like, where the fuck are you? Like, it would be nice if you showed up and actually understood and supported the humanity of your neighbor, right? So not to get heavy, but I do think that um, it's super important that we say the word and we talk about it and, and recenter it in its proper place of a, a moral choice that somebody might make in their medical history. And that doubting anybody who has an abortion um, is profoundly stigmatizing and I wish we had a president that could be a little bit more passionate and show that Joe Biden compassion in the way he can for other things but I think his own moral compass isn't there and that's a little bit troubling just in the in the scope of things so Joe Biden if you're listening if you had a little conversation honestly like with folks who've had abortions you may it may change you forever yeah, but Joe Biden, it's a bit like steering a tanker, you know? Yeah. You got to start the turn so much earlier than you think. Oh, you know what I'm saying? That's why I got to drink while I do these shows. <laughs> uh, so I actually... I feel you. So, uh, uh... Am I bumming you out? No. Okay. I mean, the world is bumming me out, I mean, but right. you're, you're right. wonderful. Right. Uh, I expected a lot, and okay. it's better than I expected. Oh, good. You know what I'm saying? You know, uh, set the bar low, and you always win. But so... So, no, but look, look you're... I, I was thinking about the fact that... that you know, The Daily Show is created. It starts with uh, Craig Kilborn. It was this kind of acerbic, kind of jokey show. It evolves with Jon Stewart and becomes a more of a commentary on the media. It evolves with Trevor Noah, it, it, who has this great outsider's perspective on the division, with his own experience w about the divisions that are roiling America. This has been, I mean, it's one of the most kind of important comedic voices in politics. What do you hope to see The Daily Show evolve into next as someone who's been watching it from and, and part of it from the very beginning? Well, I think, I don't know that the question is what do I wish I saw because 
I just want to give a quick correct. When we launched, we launched based on the media we had, right? Yeah. Which was local news. There was one cable network. You know, two months after we launched, MSNBC launched, and then three months after Fox launched, right? To, I, I might to be clear when I when the, when Daily Show launched, I fucking. It was like the most magical and perfect when the ads for what the Daily Show would be had just Craig Kilborn's voice doing jokes over. When smoke. news breaks, we fix it. I was like, whatever this is. That was the tagline. <laughs> it was amazing, and whenever, and I was like, I was so as a just a sort of yeah. engaged, uh, uh, um, uh, very lonely teen. I was so. <laughs> Yeah. I was literally sitting and making little car. I was making uh, car card towers with ca decks of cards. I feel super old. Do you want to stop? I'm sorry. Okay, you're doing great. We're doing great. Uh, no, no, no. I, but what I'm saying, I think what I'm saying is because that was the media and we were satirizing the media, what I hope for the show is that it pays as close of attention as it always has to holding up a mirror to the media. And as the mirror, as the media evolves, like, what does that look like? And I think that's, it's almost a question that I can't answer because I feel like, I don't even know how people watch it anymore, right? Like yeah. I was just on last Monday night with Sarah Silverman, yeah, I yeah. was just a guest. And there's not a single person I know that watched it that night. Everyone's like, I saw you the next day, I watched it the next day. And so how people even consume media now, um, it's tricky because you're not satirizing the specific kind of thing you know the stone phillips kind of i mean when we launched there was fucking 17 news magazines on network news 17 what a golden era it was a golden era 2020 hugh downs oh. robert walters oh somebody, eye to eye dead. coast to coast face the to face best. butt to butt tongue to tongue hell yeah tongue to butt there was a lot of shows a lot of shows <laughs> all happening <It's laughs> tongue, to tongue, tongue to butt was not a show <laughs> tongue to butt but, uh, at least it wasn't a news show it was <laughs> something Probably on Hunter Biden's laptop. Who knows? But, um, you know, whatever. I don't know. What? what? I, don't, I haven't seen hey, it. Like, what? why would I want to see it? Isn't hey, that weird? what? Those people beg to see Hunter Biden's laptop. It's like, are you just running his OnlyFans page? Like, what is wrong with you? He didn't post it. I don't understand. I don't understand. I'm very confused about those people. But anyway. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> you know that when uh, Air America launched, I bought, a, I bought a radio to listen to it. Were you 11? Shut up. Okay. I wasn't. No, you're like, you know, when the Daily Show launched, I was changing my own diapers because my mom left me I was for like, dead. I was like, goo goo gaga, who's this Craig Gilborn <laughs> fellow? You know, my favorite Daily Show story, do you want to know my favorite Daily Show Please. story? Okay, so the, me the, the network desperately wanted the Daily Show to be like a wacky entertainment satire. And like, I just was like, no. Even though, and they, like I was a, I was a kind of a thorn in their side, and so they would always say like, "Can you make it more lead?" No, so some Applebee's wanted to sponsor a fake commercial that we were doing, and so I was like, "I don't think that's a good." Idea. And they were like, "Stop it! Just stop saying no. This is not your like." The network was like really mad, and I was like, "I can I just say?" And they were like, "No." Applebee's is sponsoring this ad. And I was like, okay. The ad was this weather satire called Don't Go There. So for 30 seconds on the screen, it just said Applebee's Don't Go There. And they would not. <laughs> and I was like, I, you know, a broken, a broken clock is right twice. I don't know. That maybe doesn't apply. But um, yeah, so that's my favorite thing of just being like, mm, well, maybe you should listen to me. <laughs> Are you okay? I'm great. I just can't. Don't go there. I don't know what to say. <laughs> what can people do, before we let you go, what can people do to support your organization? What, what is the most helpful thing uh, for people hearing this? Uh, the most helpful thing, of course, donate aafront.org. I'll obviously say that. But... A really helpful thing is one of the programs we have is called Operation Save Abortion. And if you're somebody who, when Roe fell and you were like, oh my God, I don't know what to do, that's a failing of our movement, right? So we created a series where you can, I highly recommend gathering your friends and we have all these experts from different fields, abortion funding, legislative work, um, direct action work, uh, f helping clinics. And you can watch all of this series. It's really cool. There's a workbook you do. And then you can figure out all the different ways to help. 
and then we will hook you up locally and nationally with with an organization that is on the ground where you live and also we have an activist calendar you can get involved there so go to operationsaveabortion.com donate some money um join us in the streets we do a lot of really fun shit uh liz one said before you go i just want you to understand that when i described what i was doing it wasn't that i was so young it was that i was older than you think and a loser no <laughs> well the fact is that's what i love is that you were like when air america came on I bought a radio. Because well, I, I was like, living wow. in New York and I didn't have a radio, so oh. I went and bought one so that I could listen to the very first day because it meant so much to me. Remember how wild that day was? I remember it was uh, it was uh, BB Newworth pretending to be Ann, Ann Coulter, Coulter in a closet yes. that Al Franken was hosting, and I because I because I was so I was so excited about the prospect of this progressive radio station. It was very cool. And I was temping as a paralegal, and I had like the, I I literally I don't think I worked that day, and I went and got pizza and sat in front of my radio and listened to the first day of Air America radio it was a big deal to me it was really fun and it, it was started great. with al show and then we didn't start till the second day but yeah that was yeah it started at noon that's when i tuned in because that's yep. when i got the pizza they opened yep. they opened just in time <laughs> it's so wild to think back on. i know we have to go it's, now you said that i'm just gonna ponder silently while you transition out from me when we come back <laughs> kara swisher is here thank you so much that was great Thanks. that was great thank you thank you thanks everybody you're fun <laughs> 